Welcome to the Space Camp Alumni 40th celebration. And here we are with some of the original attendees from some of the first class. So I would love to introduce you to each of them. And then we're going to just start right into the stories. So on my screen, we're going to start with Chip, then Chuck, then John, Matt, and Scott. So Chip, I would love to hear how you found out about Space Camp. You know, um, 1982, uh, when they were opening the program up, uh, they ran just a small blurb. So I got a small, about a three sentence blurb in the Birmingham News that my grandparents saw. Um, and uh, they asked my parents if I'd be interested in doing something like that. Uh, Columbia had just flown uh, for the first time in 81. Uh, I did a fifth grade project on the shuttle and was enamored about the space program. And that's kind of where it started. So um, got the opportunity. My parents knew some folks that were working at the Space Center at the time. Uh, I'm not going to say strings got pulled, but I was lucky <laughs> enough to be uh, in that first week. It's cool to know that Chuck was there at the same time. And, uh, you know, it was magic. It, um, you Absolutely. know, for, for a 12 year old kid, and of course there were older kids that were there, but for a 12 year old kid that had never done anything like that, uh, I had been to the Space Center before, but to go to camp and be there, and then as the week progressed to begin to be treated like the rock stars that we didn't even think we were, <laughs> uh, and to get the media attention that we were getting was was spectacular. Yeah. Congratulations. Wow. How about you, uh, Chuck? Your turn. How did you find out, and what class were you in? What week? Uh, okay, I was there the very first week in 1982, uh, and I actually grew up in Huntsville. So uh, I found out about it on the evening news one night, sitting there having death. I think it was probably WAAY, uh, watching the evening news and ha having dinner. I just looked at my parents and said, I'm going. And um, how old were you, Chuck? 13. Yes. Because I was, if I'd waited a year, I would have, you know, then 13 was the upper age limit. So I was like, and my birthday was in June. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, snuck and, in. Um, yeah, and I think I drove, or I had my mom drive me to the space center to pick up. It was a little yellow trifold that was the entire camp brochure, and you had to get your science teacher from school to sign it, yeah. saying you were could go. And remember, uh, Miss Adams, my eighth grade science teacher, was like, "Oh wow, this is cool." <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. So, so far, thank you, parents. I mean, really. <laughs> and local news. How about you, John? Yeah. How did you find out about Space Camp and what week were you? So I was, and I can't remember what number it was, third or fourth week. We uh, finished on July 2nd. So it was the last week of June. That would have been the third week. Is that the third week? Okay. Yep. Yep. I've got the picture floating around somewhere that's got the number on there. Uh, so we were third week and I was kind of the same way. I, I, I want to say I read about it in the paper. So I was living at, we at the time lived in Aliceville in Pickens County in West Alabama, just small, small town. Uh, and I remember that same three piece, that folded pamphlet basically that you had to fill out to apply and, and got my science teacher. I was going from, um, uh, I was 12 at the time and another guy in my class, we agreed, we both signed up for it. So I think it was uh, his parents took us and then both our parents came out for the, uh, to bring us home afterwards, but it was a big deal. I was kind of the same way. It was first time ever really kind of going off on my own to something like that. And um, it was, it was exciting. It was a truly exciting and yes. we had a blast. Uh, Staying at dorms at University of North Alabama. And um, you know, that was before all the have and all that stuff was created. So it was a big uh, deal. Oh, yeah. pardon me, John. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yes. This is incredible. And for all of you uh, who are listening and watching, a newspaper is printed news <laughs> on a paper. <laughs> but we would read then, about was, events yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the fun. news, in local. Okay, Matt, <laughs> Matt, where did you find out? And what do you remember when you went? Uh, yeah, um, I, I was, uh, at, at the time, I think I was in seventh grade and, um, or maybe sixth grade, I, I can't remember. And the, uh, no, it was the seventh. And what happened was my brother and I were both, um, my brother, he's about 18 months older than me. So I was one of the more younger 
people that went there. I think I was probably like 11. Okay. Whenever I was wow. there or maybe 12, uh, yeah, I was, it, it, it was, uh, it was kind of like in the early stages of space camp. It was just starting. They wanted to know what was going on. The school was going to pay for half of it. And then the parents had to pay for the other half of it. My parents are like, you guys are going, you guys are going, we're going to pay. We're going. So we went, you know, so my mom and dad drove us down there and, you know, and we, we attended, it was, it was a great time. I did, you know, like I, I see you guys holding up your folders and I had one and I had the wings that I had the wings. I had everything. I, everything. I just don't know what happened because, you know, I went off to college, mom and dad got a divorce and everything just kind of went. But yeah. you remember the impact that space camp made. Let's all grab uh, our space camp stuff. The way the uh, diploma or the, uh, I actually have my class of 93 downstairs, or not 90, uh, 83 downstairs. Look at that. <laughs> so I was at that celebration in 2012. Oh, that's wonderful. Look at those books and guides and all of our frame certificates. Okay, question. We've got to get to Scott first. And then my question for all of you while we're thinking, while Scott's going, do you remember who your guest lecturer was? at graduation. Scott, where did you come from when you attended your first base camp? Well, I was right down the road. I'm seventh generation on land down by the Tennessee River off of Hobbs Island Road. And all my relatives on my mom's side of the family has worked for NASA in some form or fashion. From my grandfather operating the crane that lifted Bob Braun up to check out the top of the rockets to- Wow. My mom was even a secretary for a while, and my aunts were working at the, uh, was it the the flight center there? I think it's called Marshall. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but I really owe the thanks to my grandmother, because she is the one that funded it. And uh, and when they said that I didn't even say goodbye, I was in the car <laughs> waiting for them just to drive me over there. I was so <laughs> excited, uh, you know, being twelve years old and just yeah, like like. Someone else had already mentioned that, you know, it was just first time away from home, just a, just an amazing event. And I have, I don't even know the exact week, maybe I can find it out through some research, but I have the picture, yes. you know, my stuff oh, wow. went through a flood, but uh, I'll bring this when, when I come with my son. So maybe we can figure out the exact week I was in. Look at that. Yes, That's definitely. terrific. Oh my gosh. So did you guys walk into a brand new sparkling habitat and did it have that new habitat smell? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We were living in the do in dorms, what they call the dorms at UAH. UAH, they were brand new <laughs> dorms. Right next door. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But they were, they were actually a student apartments. There were six, six of us in each, in each apartment. Yep. With, and you had a counselor, uh, a, a counselor counsel slept with you in one Yeah. Hour. Yeah. I continued to go to space camp. I went from 82 until 87 and then came back in 96 as a staff member and continued to work. I worked there for about 10 years, um, eventually being the director of, of aerospace programs over space camp, AC, uh, parent, child, et cetera. There was four of us that were doing that. And um, it, it's kind of funny because you say that by the time I got to that point and we were doing welcome aboards with the kids, we were going back and you're going through all of these rules and regulations. It's about a two page document that you're reading out to them. And I always started off saying, keep in mind, these rules exist because at some point in time, somebody Someone. did this. <laughs> and now we have to have a rule that says, don't do this. It was Matt. So it, was, it was Matt. Okay, okay. Um, it was always Matt, but it was someone that was Matt. And that, I'll tell you what. I, I may or may not be a part of that problem. Oh, it was, <laughs> right, it was right. Chuck. Right. You know, no one really knows. How many of you went back or knew someone who went back because of you or have someone in your family who is now going back next generation? All of us? I've got two children that have graduated and a third that we're still working on scheduling because he was supposed to go, but the pandemic mm -hmm screwed that one up sure. so we're we're right. got to get him there and, and, I'm I'm right. and i'm threatening to send my wife just, to, <laughs> <laughs> just so we get the whole family a set of wings <laughs> yeah i'm fortunate enough my son gabriel 
is just turned nine, which is, you know, just meets the minimum age requirements. So we've yes. got him set up for the 4th of July. It's awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I'm later in life, dad. So it's just, it's really cool to see it go full circle now. Yeah. And he's super excited to go. He'd be, he'd be in here telling you all about it, but he's already in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And Chip, thank you for all the years and all the things that you've given to the program throughout the years. What was it for each of you, both when you got there, that was your impression like, oh my gosh, was it a ride? Was it a shuttle or a rocket in the rocket park? Was it the museum? So think about that. And then what was it when you left that has stayed with you? Let's start with what impressed you when you first arrived what was the one thing that you were like oh my gosh when you got there anyone um for me it was you know when you're driving of course 565 wasn't there uh to drive up yeah. but as you were approaching the space center um the only thing you could see from a distance was the vertical saturn one of course now it's a saturn five uh yeah. but you could see that saturn one and you knew it was like you were entering the mecca of something major uh, you know checking in was was unbelievable and you know just the experience of being there um at that point in time i didn't realize it until i saw the movie a year later the right stuff came out in 83 um and at that point i could equate that for us in 82 it was like being mercury astronauts um it was something totally yeah. new something totally different and every time we turned around, there was somebody with a camera in your face telling you to either do this, do that, <laughs> flip this switch, do whatever. Um, I, you know, it, it was just an unbelievable experience. That was that was true that week. Every time we turned around, there was somebody there with a a, a news camera, a still camera. So, good grief. I, I don't know if you remember this uh, or not. Uh, do you remember when they had us try the, the astronaut food? We had to eat one meal um up there in the the launch pad i think or lunch pad i think is lunch what it was pad called. yeah and so we had to go in there and they gave us you know we had freeze-dried corn and you had this that and the other and it was like eating styrofoam yeah oh, i yeah. remember but the, the ice cream I, is always the best ice cream. I, I, oh yeah yeah well, I, yeah, yeah but, but I, I, you know, you're, you're sitting there trying to eat this and all of a sudden somebody sticks a camera in your face how is it it's like styrofoam what do you mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. thing else that like caught you up so we've got the saturn five for sure my goodness and then you guys had some interesting rides and some new things in the museum that no one else had seen at the time did any of those leave impressions like the oh the rides or the experiences the, well okay so i i have to preface this story with following up on the lunch pad because there was one morning where either something broke in there or the staff forgot they had to show up and cook breakfast. Oh, no. Because breakfast that morning was bananas and Twinkies. <laughs> and then Earth Team went directly to the multi-axis trainer. <gasps> right. Which was at that time right to the right of the stage in well, I guess what is now the traveling exhibit area right where they used to do the singing flame um and we got there right about the time the museum opened and all I remember and I don't remember the person's name but about only about half of us got to do the multi-axis trainer because they were then decontaminating it and this group, okay. this tour group was going through the museum oh. and this poor person just. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was during the time when you could like ride unlimited time. Now, I think they're like this, you know, get a little bit, just enough of a taste. No one gets to go like forever. Uh, yeah, we were. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we spent an enormous amount of time on that thing and then we did the one six gravity chair i mean like two hours or something <laughs> i mean we were exhausted by the time we finished that i remember awesome. that one. i didn't weigh enough to bring it all the way down <laughs> they have to hang weights off of it yeah <laughs> that was that, <laughs> i remember the 
I was all about rockets and yeah. we did the cricket launches. Oh yeah. Oh and yeah. They had this this the clear tube. Yeah, the, the Estes rockets. rockets. He got to go free. And mine lived. I remember that. Oh, yours lived. Well, he then did. that makes you an so excellent pilot. You were an excellent pilot back then, then too. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Pretty Scott. Hard. You know, I think kids still do that. I think they do find really? some live yeah. readers and put them in the tubes. <laughs> and uh, was there ever a time you felt homesick or were you too busy having the time of your life? Everyone no. was too busy. Fact, oh, yeah. My you mom, were... my mom picked me up and said she was worried to death because I hadn't called her all week. <laughs> you were too busy. Scott yeah. was he having the time of his life. I oh, mean, yeah. Chuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I tell you one thing I remember is that, you know, I don't know how many international kids were there that first year, but to me, it seemed like a lot. That was just one of the memories from, I don't know, like United Arab Emirates. I mean, a lot of other places from around the world kids were there from. That's true. Wow. Even back in the first year, that's incredible. My year as well. Um, John, do you remember any particular memory that you can only tell here in this private trusted group that we can share? <laughs> No, I mean, this is getting aired in about, you know, several yeah, weeks exactly. in front of people. It's fine. A lot, of, a lot of the same memories. I mean, it was my first time to come to the Space Center. And so that was just coming in and seeing all the exhibits and knowing that we're going to be here for a week was just kind of overwhelming at first. Um, but then, you know, being able to go in and do, do the access trainer, doing the zero G, doing the uh, the moonwalker, the moon gravity simulator, you know, that was, it was all incredible at the time. And then going to, you know, making the trip over and seeing the neutral buoyancy tank. I do remember that one mm -hmm. and watching them yeah. actually in their training and practicing and yeah. listening to so, the actual, you know, the, the teams there talk about what they do. It was very, so that was being assembled, but not available for you at the time to go in it. But no, that was the, the actual one over at, yeah. They oh, take, I yeah. see. They took I us over see. to Marshall. Yeah. Uh, we, would, we would do specific tours over there. They'd take us over uh, one day to the neutral buoyancy oh. uh, simulator over there. Yeah. And we also did. Um, we did the static test stand. Static test stand where Enterprise was and where they did uh, the uh, mm -hmm. Saturn V work. And then they also took us over to, um, I don't know what it's called now, but it was the uh, uh, PL. CL or something like that, but it was the space, it was going to be the space lab uh, for all intents and purposes, mission control for when they flew a space lab mission. Yeah. Uh, and they were doing training and everything over there. Now the module that was there for training is now on the training center floor or the mission complex floor at camp. <laughs> um, so, but that was, that was cool to be able to see that. Does anyone remember who spoke? at their graduation? Was it a counselor uh, or anyone in particular? So I had, I know it kills me. It kills me. Oh. Because mine was a colleague of Warner Von Braun. Yep. And I it wish was... I would have written his name down. I I mean, the accent, it was so heavy. I don't even know if the students were understanding him, but all I could think of was this man worked with Warner Von Braun. How lucky am I as a kid? And for someone from the Midwest, I had never experienced y'all that kind of yeah. heat in my life. Oh Ours. my word, was it hot? Was it hot when all of you were there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, summertime um, in Alabama, there's no other definition. For that. Yeah, I was say it's <laughs> hot. It was hot, yeah. It was. Um, but for us, it was, uh, I know uh, Ed Buckby was the, was basically was, the one. I mean, he's the one that actually got yeah. started. Uh, and I remember him being there for the graduation and, and playing, you know, very key part in it. I remember him yeah. giving us our wings and everything. Oh, but uh, mm -hmm. one of the one of the German we, scientists that was on von Braun's team that worked with was, us, Conrad yeah. Dannenberg. Yeah, that's uh, it. Say so, it again. <laughs> Conrad Dannenberg. Yeah. Yep. So okay. and he he continued on. Dr. Von T continued on uh, working with the Advanced Academy kids. Um, and I mean, up until mid 2000s i think um so it was always nice to be able to have them around so we got to see conrad a good bit and he i mean was a big fixture uh i they did a, mm -hmm. a, 
a rocket engine test, or not a test, but a lecture, uh, took us over to a RL-10 engine uh, there in the museum. And uh, we're getting our lecture on this engine from Conrad Dannenberg. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> I, th I think I learned more about physics in, the, in that in that presentation <laughs> I did in my entire high school and college career. I bet. Yeah. I bet. I, oh I, my word! I mean, that's how that's how physics goes. It's I remember, in, you know, in college, you know, I went to Ohio State, and it was like, it was like, okay, the this this row stand up all the way up to the top. So everyone stood up, and then everyone else stayed seated. They goes, you guys are not going to make it through physics. The rest of you will. You know, it's like, I mean, that's how bad it was. It was like, oh man, it, it's rough. You know, <laughs> you know, it, it, it seemed like a, more of a, you know, a mind, a mind boggler than anything else. But back then, that's what we that's what we went to space camp for. because We wanted to see those experiences and we could we could feel it. And, um, yeah. you know, my, my dad, my dad worked on the, the crawler in 66 and 67. So he was part of a lot of what was going on, you know, down in Fort Lauderdale. So, I mean, that's what, you know, to me, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, you got to got to get in there and you got to do that thing. You know, it's 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 uh, it's space, you know, but yeah, it's that's so it's cool. cool. Does it, anybody remember Mrs. Baker? Because we got to oh, see yes. her live. There. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I remember. Still alive, then? I remember in. And you guys got all the good stuff. High school. I got nothing. I think I'm getting to go to one of Mrs. Baker's birthday parties. <laughs> oh, how fun. One of the, one of the memories I'd love to um, share and then have you guys recall too, is when you were done and you left, what was it like? How, how did you go back into your community, into your schools, into your friends and explain it? Like, what was your space camp experience for me? My parents drove me down from Chicago. It was quite the trip. And then I cried the entire way home. And I know my parents years later, they told me we were really worried about you. What kind of kid cries 1200 miles for two days in the car? We didn't know if you were sad or happy or sick. And I said, you know, later I obviously shared with them that was like no other experience I know I'll ever have in the Midwest. I would never be able to find my, my team, my crew like that, my friends, my nerds, <laughs> my space lovers. And quite honestly, my girls, like other girls in STEM and in, you know, rocket science and space interest. So I cried tears of like, it's ending for me. I thought it was truly over. I had no idea that later I'd go on and continue in the space industry. But for all of you, when you were done, despite your Chuck paparazzi, you know, memories and experience of all of those. Um, <laughs> Tell right. us what it was like and how you incorporated your experience back to your friends and family. Oh, well, I mean, I was kind of lucky in the fact that, you know, I live there in Huntsville. In fact, um, Sherry Buckby was in our class with us and she was, she was actually went in, in my homeroom in high school. Oh gosh. So, so yeah. So it was, you know, they, they found out we went and we're like, they're like, well, what did you do? What? A space camp I, for some reason it seems like even though it was on there's only a few people in Huntsville figured out it was there and went I was really I was really surprised there weren't more people from Huntsville there in those early weeks but um you know but it was yeah that we got all kinds of questions about it in fact I left I left space camp that Friday and I think I had to go to Boy Scout camp on Sunday and it, they're like, you, you just did what? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, we flew space missions. It's like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it was quite the thing to get to talk to people about it. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's really difficult to try to explain to somebody what you did during that week. Um, it was, I think it was special. There was a couple other people that thought they wanted to go to it and they didn't do it. Their parents just didn't make it happen. 
And we were really in the uh, big time science. Uh, you know, we were shooting off rockets, you know, the SDs, you know, we built our own rockets back then and shot them all yeah. we like 12 years old. And, you know, we just, everything was about space and everything was about science. And it was really difficult, I think, for a lot of parents to be able to take that week off and get their kids down there. Luckily, my parents were able to take me down there and take my brother because we both went, my brother's older than me. So he was like one of the older ones in that same week. And, um, you know, it, and it was just, it was phenomenal. That, were you a pilot on the mission when you were there for oh, that week? I wanted to be. All right, so here's the, <laughs> the flight plan. Look at that. All right, you know. Get out of here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, hey Scott, you got to scan that in, man. You got to email. Yeah, it. you do. Absolutely, that's awesome. And I thought I was payload specialist, but actually, after reviewing it, I was actually the launch and landing director. <laughs> so I got to say, you know, I, in my second my second line right here, I did five, four, three, two, one, online, active line, shuttle. This is calm. You are go for launch. Wow. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> You have so, that, Scott. That is, awesome, Scott. that is amazing. I'll tell you what, that, that that that's some good stuff right there, man. I would, I, like I said, I would die to have my folder right now. Uh, I, I, I can I I'd I'd gladly make a copy for anyone and everyone, or get it online, or just yeah, Please. whatever. I, I brought it because um, to kind of pay it forward, you know, for my son Gabriel with the Scouts, and we went during the pandemic when space camp was over mm -hmm. you know boeing you know they contributed i think about a half a million dollars and i think almost every state contributed and alumni was looking for for donations yep. and i figured well you know i think the best thing i could offer is get these kids and go so we did the overnight with our pack from uh, georgia and uh, there wasn't a lot of us and that place was real quiet but man they treated us like we we're gold because we we're there and uh, they let us go through the museum in the middle of the night i mean it was just so cool and uh yeah, yeah. it just so uh, i mean it's really it's, it's really gone full circle but it, you asked um that about you know what i remember most and i'm gonna say you know that just being there and being part of it i never had the wherewithal that this would actually lead me in any direction but it planted the seed that took you know a couple of decades later to foster in me you know and uh now i'm in the airline industry and i have been actually for a very long time um but because of you know ups and downs with 9 11 and everything else you know i've worked for four airlines four furloughs you know a lot of fun stuff from you know a lot of places but i'm in a great place with southwest we mentor kids now through adopt a pilot program and um you know it's really it's paid itself forward so it's it's been an amazing program that has really launched my lifestyle and my career and i'm so thankful yeah I, i'll tell you what too in, in going off the the pilot thing uh my brother uh he's actually a pilot he lives out in in uh, virginia and he's got his pilot license as well and uh and his uh commercial and what is it called the instrumental or whatever he's got his own plane he does his own thing and he like he flew out for the girl's 18th birthday you know in september like out to delaware here and i picked him up and him and his wife and then you know dropped him back off of the airport and then he buzzed our house like three or four times whenever it was funny <laughs> we were all take out there taking pictures and so but it was so instrumental in my brother. So in, in my brother now, he works for Lockheed Martin. Um, you know, I sent them a link to us. You need to get on there. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get on there. But anyway, he's not on there. But um, he, um, he, but anyway, he, uh, he, he's, he's uh, really into um, doing that kind of thing with the space and the, the programs and the, uh, they, they build a lot of stuff that goes into space because he went back and forth between Orbital and Lockheed Martin uh, as an engineer. So he's, he's shown me some stuff that's just like 
off the off the charts. Those of you who've been back, you've been able to see the progress, the building, the excitement that's happened, the evolution yeah. of Space Camp, right? I haven't been back in a couple years, but when I went back with my daughter, I was blown away. It was just so yeah. good to see some of the traditional stuff in the museum and then see the new stuff. And I was missing some of the rides, but that's okay. There's new rides. But folks, what do you think you want to share that you would love to see and enjoy for the next 40 years for space camp or for anyone who hasn't gone as it evolves and continues to evolve. We've got robotics, we've got aviation, we've got all kinds of things for STEM and the women and the international students. So 40 years from now, we're gonna have this commercial space platform like never, like no one's ever seen. And do you think space camp will still be that fundamental experience that Matt shared for so many? I think absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in, in 02, we were celebrating the 20th anniversary and it, it, it didn't dawn on me at that point in time that we had already been 20 years. I was shocked. Yeah. Uh, and I was working there full time. Um, you know, Colonel Bryson, Ralph Bryson, who was the uh, the VP over uh, all of the camp programs at that point in time, uh, he set me up. He was like, look, you're the guy you know, I got interviewed by the Huntsville Times. It was like a repeat of 1982 all over again. Um, and to be able to experience that uh, was unbelievable. And then to come back for the 30th, I was like, dear God, we're now making it 30 years. To see it now at 40 years and things that we had dreamt of that we wanted to do with the program. We knew we wanted to go back to the moon. We wanted to go to Mars. We wanted to go further out as far as the kids' programs. and Air and conditioning. Up. Well, real food. <laughs> yeah. Um, and trust me, the cafeteria is pretty darn good for, uh, for camp food. Trust me. Yes. Um, it, well, is. it is. But with that said, um, you know, we're seeing those things develop now. They're doing, you know, those kind of missions now for the kids uh, and they're getting to experience that. So it's, it's unbelievable uh, that things that we thought of at that point in time are beginning to get mirrored. And I think it's great. I mean, we're, we're having a little bit of a renaissance with the space program right now. <laughs> Uh, SpaceX, Blue Origin, uh, Virgin uh, Galactic, uh, being able to do what they're doing. And then, I mean, I have been just hook, line, and sinker on SLS uh, for the last several weeks, watching it get rolled out and seeing uh, people. Haven't that, we all? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people that, that I knew, worked with at, at Space Camp and at Aviation Challenge, um, people that I have been involved with. Uh, are down there. They're supporting that program. And I'm seeing them taking their photos with this rocket. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's great to, great to see. Um, and it's, it's just, it's unbelievable how space camp has influenced so many for, for my case here. Um, it has afforded me the opportunity to meet every single man that walked on the face of the moon. I have had intimate conversations with these, with each one of them. Um, you know, having, having dinner with Neil Armstrong and Gene Cernan, um, at the same time, uh, is is an unbelievable uh, experience. So, wow. Um, wow. Wow. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it has done a lot for me. I mean, I spent 20, 25 years in STEM education, uh, and it's all because of that first week in 1982. Wow. How many of you have been back since and have seen the facilities evolve oh, yeah. and grow? I well, haven't been back you know. camp, but I've gone back as part of a chaperone for my daughter's school trips over there yeah i've been back for my kids camp graduations and yeah it's just night and day and i still don't think i still don't think either of my two that have been believe me that our space shuttle stimulator was black plywood <laughs> <laughs> with a slide projector <laughs> show them uh, show them the video that i, I linked in Oh, really? Okay. Is it in there? I will. Yeah. Believe the YouTube <laughs> link that I've dropped in, that's the Today Show video of the of my group. Here's oh, the funny great. part about that. I'll, I'll, Beth, I'm going to jump back in and just say this. Where Space Camp was in 1982, where we started, um, is it was the Education Resource Center Yep. out in the middle of Rocket Park. It was just to the right of the centrifuge. And it, it had a canvas, basically a, a, an extended tent that came off of there. And that's where the shuttle cockpit was. That's where the 5DF chair was, where we did our EVA. Mm -hmm. 
the launch the launch console was an old probably redstone era uh launch console that you pressed a button and it lit up that's all it did uh it wasn't connected to and you could you could punch the buttons but they didn't actually do anything yeah they didn't do anything <laughs> but hey it was the greatest it was the greatest thing ever um <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we all had our, we had our tables in there. We all had you had twelve tables because you had uh, a table for each one of the planets. You had one for the moon and you had one for the sun. Um, you know, Go Sun Team, nineteen eighty two. Uh, you know, so it was an unbelievable experience. And now you go up there and you see they're building a space camp operations building. Uh, they've already got an education resource building up there. Uh, you know, the, the, the habitat has now been built, you know, it's, it was, it's just unbelievable. I used to have an office that looked out and I, my window, I had two huge glass windows that looked out. I saw, I saw Pathfinder every day for work. I mean, yeah. I, it's one thing I can say is that I've already feel like I've hit the pinnacle for my job. So everything's oh. downhill from here. Well, and you, and you know, before that was the education research center, that was the, uh, that was the snack bar there at the space center where we were. <laughs> yeah oh my god uh our scout well cub scouts we got to go back again this year now that everything's rebounding and we moved during the pandemic so when we gave the new uh pack the information about us going during the pandemic they were very excited about making that their big trip so we opened it up again and oh wow we had 73 participants for the for the overnight program oh, wow. and they and they weren't going to offer the program but i talked to them very nicely and said <laughs> you know scouts cub scouts they can't afford three and four hundred dollars for a weekend i think there's another one like a pathfinder or something i said we really need to bring back that overnight one to make it you know justifiable for cost for these young kids to go and they did and it was just oh it was so awesome and this was just less than 60 days ago Awesome. oh wow recently yeah. oh how yeah. wonderful and we, oh, it was and we got so to stay hard. in the habitat which you know of course none of us got to stay in oh the, yeah the fancy, you think? the fancy one so i got to actually stay there it was super cool top bunk of course of course <laughs> of course <my> <laughs> yeah. oh I, did you fit uh, did you fit barely, those are small barely. barely yeah me too yeah. yeah i love how um it's such a cool it's exactly as a kid that's what you think a space habitat would look like but those stairs oh those stairs <laughs> right boom 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 every Here's kid times advice. 27 every minute I'll always use the stairs don't get on the elevator oh no i wouldn't dare but those stairs echo through the entire you know building and you're like oh my gosh how many more days are we days i love it though oh and camp you know there's something to be said whether it's space camp boy scout camp there's the camaraderie there's right the experiences getting to know each other so i have to ask some of you have reconnected here tonight and gotten to see each other from that first the first uh, initial year have you kept in touch anyone with your fellow campers um, oh. other guy i went with we're friends on facebook but that's been the extent of it we yes, Facebook has school. reunited so many of yeah. us. That's wonderful. Oh, that's good. Date myself. We swapped letters for a couple of years. Sure. Um, but yeah, no, not not anything recently from the Earth Team people that I remember. I recall running into one person from my group. I don't remember if it was Boys State or Governor's Honors Academy, Academy or whatever. But um, I, I ran into a few uh, uh, through the years, but not since high school. Awesome. Oh, I, I um, have connected with a couple on Facebook, but again, I went a little bit later and I was at NASA walking down the hallway at the Johnson Space Center and I ran into a girl. I just, I was like, I just, you just look familiar. And we started talking. I said, did you go to space camp? She's like, yes. And I thought, oh my gosh, here we are. Two girls that went to space camp are here at NASA. So we kept in touch. We weren't there together at the same time, but just to know that someone started at space camp and then was walking the halls of NASA together. Um, her name was Amanda and she's gone on to successes at NASA as well. So that was such a moment for me in the hallway. It's one thing to know that in your heart, you know, privately, you had this incredible space camp experience and you followed your path, but to see someone else and then the two of us to connect at NASA was just 
uh, such a moment. So Chuck, welcome. We're just about to wrap up, but if you can show us your video and wave and join us as an alumni as from the original first year that Space Camp started, we'd love to hear from you as an older camper. If you can turn your video on, we'd love to hear from your experience so that your brother doesn't tell on you all the things that allegedly you did. <laughs> So as he comes on, folks, we're going to wrap it up. We'll wrap it up here a little bit, but we have, as you know, and if you've been keeping track, big things coming down the pipe at Space Camp and Academy. And so there are new buildings, there are new programs, there's all kinds of things. And so for all of us here, um, especially the first class, what do you want to invite the alumni to do? Um, join, financially support, reconnect. If there's something you could call upon the alumni, what would you like them to do, folks? You know, um, I've got a unique perspective on this, being both a staff member as, a, as well as a former camper. And um, I'm gonna, gonna take a step back to uh, something that John Young said in the movie, Hail Columbia. And it's incumbent upon all of us uh, that are, are behind the scenes with Space Camp now. And it's just very simple. It's our responsibility to keep the, drive, the dream alive. Mm. So absolutely, uh, you know, we do that, whether it's financially or things like this that uh, continue to help support the program. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's important. So it's our, it's our responsibility to keep that dream alive and keep the fire burning for these kids. Well said. I think everyone can offer something, you know, whether it's, like I'm a den leader, getting packs to go, you know, um, it plants a seed for them. So maybe later yeah. on, they can actually attend the week long camp, you know, like my son is this year and, and uh, well, do what we can, whether it is donation or of your time, resources, talent to keep the dream alive for the next generation. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's probably one of the best things we, we can do is just simply talk to other kids and parents about it and because i mean even as well known as it is i mean i can tell you i'm so i retired from the army and i now teach high school and i can Thank tell you, you that that in in my high school there's probably no one other than my students that have ever heard the word space camp mm. okay we need a new space camp 2.0 movie folks i think because that's what did it for me that's what did it for so many students that yeah. movie well there was a book too do you remember the book first came out and then the movie oh, you know speaking of things hang on i got one thing i need to show y'all because it's up here in the closet oh i love show and tell okay while well, he gets that yeah he's right though there's a lot of people that are still asking questions like is is space camp still in florida or california where is space camp <laughs> I'm going to tell you my, my movie story on that one. Um, I got invited back to, I got to be an extra for the movie. We actually filmed some scenes that were supposed to be in there that didn't make it. Uh, but we got invited to come up and do the premiere because they had the premiere in Huntsville. They had some of the actors there. We had a huge, it went to the theater. It was over at Madison Square Mall at that point in time uh, where they did the premiere. And then we had a huge party back at uh, the Marriott. And of course, we're all, they wanted to, all the kids wanted to, wear, wanted to wear our flight suits. We came out of the movie theater and guys stuck, a, again, camera in your face, microphone in your face. What'd you think of the movie? I went on a long winded, you know, diatribe about it's a great movie. It was wonderful. You know, I didn't like that the fact that they prepared or showed that the camp was in Florida. We all know the camps here in Huntsville, Alabama. And, you know, I'm like, I'm sure Ed Buckney appreciated me trashing that particular point about the movie, but you know, yeah, you're right. But it's at the same time, uh, that movie is still huge. And, it, and a running joke for counselor training is if you haven't seen that movie, if you haven't seen Top Gun or the right stuff, you need to go see those before you start counselor training. Right. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so this is actually my daughter's, but the space camp Barbie. Oh yes. There it is. Oh, Fill <laughs> in the box. That's we awesome. don't let her play with it. Oh, we actually her her grandmother bought them and she bought two of them. One for oh, her to play job, with and one, and one to keep. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Hang on a second before we go, Chuck. I want to do something here real quick. Hang on here. Are y'all able to see uh, see the photo? In the uh, chat? Is it in the chat, or you want to share screen? I'm trying to share the screen. Hang on a second. Thought I was doing it right, but I don't guess I did. 
Uh, if Diane didn't give you permission, you might not be able to. Yeah. Oh, oh, we can see oh. it now. Yeah, okay. See it now. Oh, wow. yep. There we Holy go. Holy smoke. smoke. This is week one. That's me right there. Right the there is Chuck. That's me. <laughs> that's Chuck. To tell us where. Oh, no, no. Hang on. I'm going to go you a step further. That's me right there next to Chuck. Right Are there. you serious? Yep. That's up. you and Chuck right there? That's me Chip and Chuck. And Chuck? Right there. Oh, my gosh. Now, did we know each other at that point in time? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> but because of this, we've been able to reconnect. Yep. Wow. Uh, and Scott, where are you? Can you show yeah, us? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm comparing. I'm looking at the picture on the screen now, and, and my picture is yours is yours much is much more organized, and it was done over on the lunar surface. This is what, this yeah. is everything lot, not to do in the photo. Absolutely. <laughs> There's a lot more a lot more people in in the photo I have. Oh yeah, yeah. You this, know, this, I don't see any of this, but yeah, in the photo you see they they've thought. By the time they got to you, they were putting signs up with the week number. Yep. And uh, yeah, this that oh first week God. of camp, it was it was okay. We're figuring out how to run a camp. Yeah, it <laughs> was wow. got to start somewhere. And yeah. I see some ladies. I yep. see a handful. Yep. Oh yeah. No, there was uh, there was uh, several girls that were uh, there at the program, and it increased as we continued yeah. to go. Um, you started seeing more and more girls coming. And the cool part about it as it continued going was that not only, you know, were the girls there, but, you know, in my case, as I, I continue to grow up, you know, I was playing football. Uh, so I'm a football player and I'm going to a space camp. And it was like, wait a minute, nerds go to space camp. No, anybody goes to space camp. <laughs> yeah. So it really was, you know, it, it was, it was just a lot of fun. I mean, you, you, you learned a lot. Um, I mean, I became the resident expert on, you know, shuttle oh. launches and did the, when we did the return to flight for STS 26, when I was in high school, you know, we've got the TV up in there and I'm basically breaking everything down as to what's happening and why it's happening. So, um, wow. yeah, yeah. Oh, Here, let me share mine. I've got, I've got my class. I... Can you share screen? Well, yeah, let me stop this. Let you stop. Oh, John chip. Thank you for sharing that. That's You're incredible. Welcome. So, the, so from that to this, a few weeks later. Okay. Oh, there so much is. more. Active. Week three. There you go. Much more. There you go. So that's yeah. The there on the front. That's that Jason. Good. I got yeah. everyone with me. So this was Team Pluto at the front. Um, oh my God. Oh, we didn't John? have that many girls in ours. We had a few. And so. where are you, John? I can't see your pointer. Right, right here, uh, bottom row, second from the left. There you oh, are. Okay. <laughs> Did you so guys get socks. visors? Yeah. Yeah. yeah y'all got y'all later on, you got jumpsuits and all of that. And, and we got visors and a t-shirt. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, y'all you, you so, were talking um, about one of the, the speakers. I have I zoomed in on my picture and I have an older gentleman. I don't know if I don't even know where I can put this on the screen where the camera is, but I've zoomed in and took a picture with my phone. Maybe y'all can see who this is. Because I can't no, see bring it closer. On the bring it closer to the camera. Yeah, hang on. Stop the stop the screen share so it gets bigger. Let's see. Oh, whoops. Let me see. Hold on. Give me a second. But uh, yeah, I took a picture of it and then zoomed in. So maybe you guys or someone may know who this is. That gentleman. That's Conrad. There. That's Conrad yep. Dannenberg. That wow. is. So and then he was obviously our speaker. Then I'm sure. Yeah. Well, there it is. I love this. Oh my gosh. Now, does anyone have their t-shirts or their hats or pins still? Got your stuff, your it's, gear? Uh, yeah, my wings are upstairs in a box with uh, all my other wings. There you go. There it is. And, um, I think Check flight suits hands. are upstairs, so yeah. Uh, my visor got damaged somewhere along the way. My wings were attached to it, and it eventually got lost. Yeah, I don't know where my visor or my... I, I probably wore the t-shirt out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, this has been so lovely. Is there anything else we want to share before we wrap up? I want to invite you to just take the floor and any last memories or events. Well, I'll just say, you know, kind of like what the rest of y'all said, it, it's, you know, it became part of me for the rest of my, has been since then. You know, I was yeah. a geek in high school, continued on the technology path, wound up getting an accounting degree. Don't, uh, that's another long story. But anyway, <laughs> But I wound up in technology. I've been with Microsoft for 16 years now. 
and I still do technology. I still tell people when we're talking about, so I don't know if you've heard of the HoloLens, but I've been doing a lot of sales and a lot of work with our HoloLens devices that allows, they call it teleportation, but you know, there's, there's two HoloLens on the space, on the space station right now. Yes. Uh, they were just talking uh-huh. about using them and I would use that and talk about space camp when I would be talking to customers about how they can use the HoloLens to do remote assist and do remote work and, and things like that. So it, it's always yeah. been a key part of everything that I've done since. And I'll tell you that both of my kids that have been to camp are now so invested in the space program, even though, you know, and they will talk about it and help promote the space program and space camp to their friends, even though they're, you know, uh, 25 and oh Lord, 21 now, um, you know, so my daughter drive, drives her poor fiance crazy because every time that, that she lives in Orlando. So every time there's a launch, she's like, we're going. <laughs> yes. Nice. Nice. So. I'd say for all alumni to keep the dream alive because yep. the seed yep. that's planted now, you know, it may take yeah. 10 20 years later, but it makes all the difference. I mean, absolutely. I, I love yeah. reaching for the stars every day. I get to go to work. I mean, it's, it's a dream country. Yes. Oh, fellas, this has been so rewarding for me just to hear these stories from you and to get re-inspired. I'll be there in June celebrating for the 40th. I know there's going to be some special guests. I hope it's some of you and you get to come. And I know they're going to be announcing some big new things. There's lots going on. So Space Camp, you know, if we can survive COVID, Space Camp is going to continue forever. And we are so lucky this is important to have your stories, to share your memories and your impressions and your perspective. Um, hopefully Chuck will return again and we'll do this again. We have a podcast and we have some opportunities. We have all kinds of ways where we can capture and share and continue these stories so that future campers can hear them and enjoy them. So thank you so much again tonight for your time. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on your 40th anniversary of the first inaugural space camp. Fellas, thank you. 